The Lone Ranger. with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Before this exciting adventure, a word from our sponsor. Remember way back when, when you were a kid growing up, you always found time to make a side trip to the little grocery store down the block. That's where you'd find the big display of Mickey snack cakes. Remember? Didn't it make you happy to pick up a devil delight and take a whiff? What a chocolatey smell. And remember the coconut-sprinkled Jim Jams or the cream-filled banana flips? Well, today, Marita Bakeries still make the Mickey snack cakes you used to love as a kid. That's why Mickey snack cakes are called smile food. The bakers know they're spreading smiles and sunshine wherever Mickey snack cakes are sold. Find a little neighborhood grocery store today or a big modern supermarket. Look for the display of Mickey snack cakes. They're all there, like you used to remember. The Devil Delights, the Jim Jams, the Banana Flips. Treat yourself to some fresh memories. Treat yourself to a Mickey snack cake. Have a smile on us. With his faithful Indian companion, Toto, the daring and resourceful mask rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. Are you still Old Humpy was a mountain with sides that were almost perpendicular in many places. The trail that circled it was barely wide enough for the stagecoach. On one side of the trail, the rock wall rose abruptly. On the other side, there was a 40-foot drop. The cliff at the bottom of the drop was broken by a large opening that led into a cave. The Lone Ranger, drenched to the skin, was familiar with the locality. He made his way through the darkness toward the cave. Oh, oh, oh easy. Steady, big fellow. Wait right here, Silver. I'll go inside and look around. We want to make sure of our accommodation. When the masked man was in the shelter of the cave, he drew from his pocket a bit of candle and lighted it with a match from a waterproof case. While he was inspecting the cave, he heard the sound of hoofbeats echoing faintly. Then he realized that the stagecoach trail was almost directly overhead. Randy and the guards squinted against oh, the driving rain yeah. as they neared the most dangerous part yeah. of the trail. How is it, Randy? Slippery? Mighty slippery. It's our last chance to turn back. Trail narrows from here on. Oh, we can't turn back. Get up there. Get along now. We got the banker's gold to put on board the train and cinnamon van. We're coming to the narrow place now, Randy. Look ahead. Yeah, I see it. We'll make it all right. Get up there. Get on now. Cross your fingers, Randy. Here's where we're awful close to the edge. Easy now. Easy now, boys. Get up there. Get along now. Easy. Hold on. A sudden flash of fire and an ear-splitting explosion came without warning just ahead of the horses. The narrow trail was torn from the wall, and tons of rock crashed down with the horses, the stagecoach, and the occupants. The 
The Lone Ranger had been inside the cave at the time of the blast. He was sealed there by the rocks that closed the entrance. Silver had fled in sheer terror. But after the rocks stopped falling, he returned to the sealed-up opening. He knew that his master was somewhere beyond the heavy stones. He pawed at the rocks. And then he stopped and raised his head. <laughs> then he pawed again. The voice of his master came through crevices. Silver didn't want to leave his master, but the command was unmistakable. Darkness had fallen. The weather showed no signs of clearing. The rain beat down on the trees and on a small lean-to of thatched pine boughs. Inside the lean-to, it was snug and dry. Toto and Dan Reed, the nephew of the Lone Ranger, huddled close to a tiny fire. The masked man had left his friends there while he visited his secret silver mine high in the hills. He had planned to return sometime before morning, but Toto was dubious. Uh, it, it pretty bad night for travel. Well, maybe him camp. Golly, I hope he can find a dry place. Uh, Dan, wait a minute. What's the matter, Tom? Maybe me hear folks. You do? We soon, soon know. I'll open the tarpaulin. Can you hear anything now? Uh, me hear him. Folks come this way. You sure have good ears. I can't. Yes, I can. I hear them. That sound like silver. And sound like him come without rider. But Tano, if he's coming without a rider, it means. Well, there he comes. Here's silver. <laughs> Scout no silver come. Tonto, you were right. The saddle's empty. Come, Dan. We go see. What is it, Silver? <laughs> Tonto, he's trying to tell us something. Dan, get horse saddle. Something's happened to the Lone Ranger. We follow Silver. Dan Reed and Tonto rode through the hours of darkness and rain, following the Lone Ranger's gallant horse. Dawn brought a lifting of the clouds. The rain stopped and the sun rose with welcome warmth. But the masked man didn't see the sun. He was surrounded by the total darkness of the cave. He worked steadily, moving rocks and digging at the wet dirt with his fingers. The ground was nearly dry when Silver halted at the pile of dirt and rocks before the cave and the wreckage of the stage nearby. Oh, 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 Easy, fella. Tano, he must be somewhere in this mess. Tano, did you hear that? Kimasabi! We hear! Silver, bring us! I'm in a cave! Don't even see you! We move rock! Get you out! Toto and Dan Reed found heavy poles of hard hickory in the wreckage of the stagecoach, and using these as a lever, pried away rock after rock. After an hour of hard work, an opening was cleared, and the masked man wriggled from the cave. Oh, golly, I'm glad you're all right, sir. Yes, Dan, so am I. For a while, I didn't think I'd see any of you again. Well, Silver come to camp. We follow him back here. One more debt I owe you, Silver. Good boy. What happened, sir? I was in the cave. I heard a stagecoach. Then, an explosion. Rocks fell and... Look up there, Tonto. The face of the cliff is smooth. There's no longer a ledge where the trail used to be. Ah, the wreckage of the stagecoach is right over there. Oh? Well, we look in stagecoach. There are two fellas inside. One nearby with shotgun. All dead. The horses? Well, they were dead, too. What do you think that explosion could have been? That's what I'd like to know. Help! Help! Well, who's that? Voice come from that way. Help me! I see him. Come on, Tonto. Uh -huh. Maybe he was on the stagecoach, too. He might be able to tell us what Help! happened. Help me! Help! Help! Steady there, steady. Don't try to stand up just yet. Lie down until we look you over. No. Dan, do you have canteens? Yes, I'll get some water. The stagecoach. See how badly he's hurt, Toto. Ah, uh, you doing? You were on the stagecoach? I, I drove it. It was a blast. Blew off the trail. Uh, oh, what's in this chest? I gotta guard it. I gotta guard it with my life. Steady. Oh. Well, he's lost consciousness. No bones broken. Here comes Dan with the water. That'll help. Here you are. Oh, thanks, Dan. Oh, golly, he's unconscious. 
Fellow will take care of him while I see what's in this wooden chest. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. Times sure have changed. Time was when people saved cookouts and picnics for summer and lazy Sundays spent under a big oak tree in the town park. Well, today's family eating habits are much more flexible. Mom might have forgotten how easy it is to fix a cook-in for lunch, maybe with hot dogs and baked beans, or a casual dinner with cheeseburgers, soup, and salad. And as you're planning your easygoing meals, don't forget to invite Marita, as in Marita hot dog and hamburger buns. Remember, Marita? We're the people who bake while you sleep. That's the only way Marita can promise you'll find the freshest rolls and bread and cakes the very next day on your grocer's shelf. But remember, we bake our famous hot dog and hamburger rolls all year long. So relax a little. Plan quick and easy meals your family will love. And don't forget Marita. Marita enriched hot dog and hamburger rolls. We're not just a summertime thing. to continue. Randy, the young driver of the stagecoach, was badly bruised and had a cut on his head, but his injuries were not serious. When he regained consciousness for the second time, with the Lone Ranger, Toto, and Dan Reed at his side, he looked around. Oh. Then his eyes cleared as they focused on the masked man. Mast. Yes, Randy. You, you know my name. We went through your pockets and found credentials. Oh. Don't try to stop just yet. Yeah, I... Guess I'm weak in her thought. You were driving the stage when it went over the ledge? Yeah. I I remember going over. Next thing I knew, I, I was in a clump of shrubs. It was morning. What, what about the others? The shrubs must have broken your fall. The guard and two passengers uh, were killed. Killed? You were clutching a wooden box. A box? That's right. Where is it? Uh, we've taken care of it. There's nothing of value in it. Nothing of value? It's full of gold. Oh, Randy, there was no gold in the box. Just pieces of iron. Iron? No, no it held gold. Uh, we'll uh, talk about that later. We'll talk about it now. You stole the gold. You took it out and put in iron to take its place. That mask, you're an outlaw. Oh, wait. Think that over, Randy. If I'd wanted gold from the chest, I could have taken it and ridden away, leaving you here. Might be days before anyone found you. There's no stagecoach due for over a week. Yeah. I'd have no reason to replace the gold with iron. Oh, of course not. But that mask... We want to help you. And we want to find out who caused the explosion that took three lives. And nearly took yours. Iron in the chest and placed the gold. The chest was locked. Yes, I, I broke the lock. While you were unconscious, I rode around the side of old Humpy and found a path leading to the ledge. But the ledge is gone. It's blown away. Oh, right here, yes. But the trail hasn't been damaged around the bend. Oh. At one point on the trail, there's an overhang. And underneath that overhang, the ledge was fairly dry. Not much rain got in there. Well, what about it? I found some footprints of heavy boots. Also, the marks of horses' hoofs. Both boots and hoofs had tracked in mud from the trail. I wonder who'd travel that road on horseback. Well, someone rode in beneath the overhang, dismounted and went out on the muddy trail on foot, and then returned to his horse. He could have been the man who set that blast. But why would anyone want to wreck the stage, kill the passengers in the garden? Who knew you had a chest that was supposed to be filled with gold? Who? Say, maybe that's it. Maybe they were after the gold. But there was no gold. Oh, yeah, that's so. Yeah. Perhaps the man who shipped the chest planned to destroy it. Perhaps he hoped to bury it beneath a lot of rock so it would never be found. And then hold the stagecoach company responsible for a heavy loss. The banker. I wonder if he'd do a stunt like that. Is he a good horseman? One of the best. He came into the office last night and persuaded my boss to let the stage go through. He said the chest of gold had to get to the railroad. I see. And he could have gotten here ahead of the stagecoach, too, even if he started out later than I did. There's a cross-country trail. It's too rocky for a stage, but a single horse could make it. How do you feel, Randy? Mad. I'm going back to town and deal with Bancroft. Steady, steady. We have no proof of anything. But if his boots and his horse's hoofs match the prints... The prints were smeared. We couldn't match them up. But three men are dead. Someone's got to pay for that. Someone is going to pay. I... Is there another stagecoach at the station in Red Rock? Oh, yes. Horses? Well, plenty of them. 
But why? I have an idea. Now, we're the only ones who know that the trail has been destroyed. If you feel up to it, I'll take you with me on Silver. Oh, I'm all right now. Good. I have some old clothes in my saddlebag. It once belonged to a prospector. They'll be large for you, but they'll be better than the ones you're wearing. Clothes? But for what? These clothes... For those clothes and a battered old hat and a mask, no one will know who you are. Why shouldn't anyone know who I am? Because we want the killer to think that everyone perished. Tonto, we'll have to wrap those others in blankets and take them into the cave. We'll send the coroner for them later, after we have found the man who killed them. In Red Rock, the sun dried out the mud. There was no word of the disaster that had struck during the night. Bancroft closed his bank and went home at the usual hour. Grisco closed and locked the stagecoach office at sundown. He went to the rear of the building to get his horse. As he entered the stable, a masked man stepped from the shadows. Hey, what's... Take it easy, Driscoll, and you'll not be hurt. Mask? Who are you? What, what do you want? We're going for a ride in one of your coaches. A ride? I'm... I'm sorry, Driscoll. This is high-handed. But I think the end justifies the means. What are you going to do? Where are you going? Uh, right over here, please. The horses are already in harness. Keep an eye on him, Tonto. I'll be back with the banker as soon as possible. Oh, uh, me do it. A banker? You mean Mr. Bancroft? Yes, he's taking a trip with us. Easy, steady, slow, steady. Move, steady. The banker sat at the supper table. He thought he was alone in the dining room until he heard a voice that was low and well modulated behind his back. Don't make a noise, Mr. Bancroft. What? Push your chair back from the table and turn around slowly. Who, who are you? What do you want? Mashed. I'm sorry, but you'll have to finish your meal later. Put down that gun. If you think you can come into my home in this manner... I, I... I am in your home. And I'd advise you not to shout and bring the cook from your kitchen. What do you want? I've come to you because I want the most responsible man in town to go on a stagecoach ride. Stagecoach ride? Come on, Bancroft. Randy, wearing a mask and the clothing of a prospector, guided four horses skillfully through the moonlit night over the trail he had followed through the rain the night before. Inside the stagecoach, Toto sat next to Driscoll. The Lone Ranger and Bancroft shared the opposite seat. There was little conversation, but from time to time, Bancroft repeated his questions. Where, where are you taking me? Where are we going on this trip? Look out the side window. There's old Humpy. That is how it stands out in the moonlight. I'm not interested in mountains at this time of night. I thought you might be. I'll see here. I've been patient with you. I've been patient as long as I'm going to be. I want to know where we're going and why. Take it easy, Driscoll. I demand that you stop this stagecoach right now. Oh, you demand? Yes, and I'm ready to back that demand. Hey, look here, Driscoll. You're covered. Sneak got her. Tell that driver to stop at once or I'll shoot. Be careful with that thing, Driscoll. I can use it. I won't hit you. On a trail as rough as this, it's pretty hard to handle a small gun. Especially when the man who sits facing you can kick. Oh, my arm. He take him. Got it. Uh, let go. Let go. Keep the gun, fellow. You, you... I'll sit back there and be quiet. Oh. You haven't much farther to go. Well, listen, I wouldn't have shot you. I was just trying to... Uh, but tell your driver to stop. Tell him to stop right now. Oh, why? Don't ask questions. Just tell him to stop, that's all. We're farther to go. Oh, no. No reason to stop here, Driscoll. But we're on the ledge. We're going around old Humpy. That's right. It's the usual trail. Driscoll, what's the matter with you? Stop, stop. Driver, stop the stage. In the name of mercy, stop or we'll all be killed. Why should we be killed? This trail it's is... It's the regular trail. It's used every week. It was used last night. Get up there. Get up. Our voices make time. That voice... That voice, it can't be... Re... Stop. Stop the stage, I tell you. The ledge ends. The trail is gone. The trail's gone? What do you mean? We'll all be killed. As soon as we get around the next bend, we'll drop off. Oh, so it's you, Driscoll. All right, Randy. You can stop here. Oh, Randy, you call him Randy. You're the one, Driscoll, who set a blast. You destroyed the trail. No, no, I didn't. How do you know there is no trail? No, I didn't. Driscoll, I... what does he mean? I'll what? tell you what I mean, Bancroft. I... The stage went through here last night with your chest. It was blown off the side of this mountain. Yeah? The chest held nothing but iron. Iron? Yes. You and Driscoll were the only ones who knew about the gold. For a time, I thought you had plotted to cheat the stage line. But Driscoll's guilty knowledge betrayed him. I heard Driscoll. Randy... 
It is you. You bet it is. And I can take the mask off now, you murdering polecat. Where's the gold? The, the gold. Between the time you accepted the chest for shipment and the time the stagecoach left Red Rock, you took out the gold and replaced it with iron. No, no, I... I'll I... make the killer squeal. Oh, wait. Let me have him. Oh, please. I'll drag him out of here and toss him over the side of this trail. Don't. Let him die on the rocks below the same as Charlie Pike, the guard. And those two passengers... Oh, no, Randy. Let me go. Where's that gold? Come on, Driscoll. Don't let him kill me. Don't let him. I didn't mean to kill anyone. I, I have a right to a trial. The law. The law right here is what we make it. Bancroft. Bancroft, stop them. I'll give you back your gold. It's in my desk. All right. No. All right, Randy. Let him go. Ah. Me got rope ready. Tie him up, fellow. Ah. So this is why we took the ride. Hmm? Uh, get out of the stage now. Can you turn it around here, Randy? Uh, just about. The trail nail is just ahead. Then tie Tonto's horse behind the stage. You can go back to town with me. Right. By the time you get back, Randy, the coroner and the sheriff will be waiting for you. Oh, uh, Mr. Bancroft. Yeah? You and Randy are witnesses to Driscoll's confession. We certainly are. And the gold in his desk will clinch oh, the case. Why did I do it? I should have known better. I was just looking at that lock. I tried a key and it fitted and I, I was tempted. Randy, you and that masked man deserve a lot of credit. It was his idea, Mr. Bancroft. I'll see that you are rewarded, Dad. I'd like to reward him, too. I don't think he'd take a reward, sir. Yeah? You see, he's the Lone Ranger. I'll sell Hello there. I'd like to just take a minute to talk to you about Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. As you know, Marita means all that's fresh and good that goes into and comes out of your oven. And Marita Brown and Serve Rolls are the ones that bake to a flaky golden brown in just six minutes. There are 12 delicious Marita Brown and Serve Rolls in every package. And if you don't use them all right away, that's all right, too. Marita guarantees freshness for several days after you buy them. Of course, in your freezer, they'll last indefinitely. But don't wait for company to have Marita Brown and Serves. Your family would love to have a basket of fresh, steaming hot rolls with breakfast, or lunch, or dinner. It'll mean you care. And what a delicious way to show your love. After all, your family deserves the best. They deserve Marita. Marita Brown and Serve Rolls. Listen to The Lone Ranger. On the following Saturday night, The Lone Ranger and Tonto rode toward the Mandan village to visit their old friend, Chief Corn Planter. As they approached the crest of a the hill, they saw a red glow and heard distant shouts and cries. Tonto, something's going on in the village. Uh -huh. It looks like fire. Come on, sir. Let's count. Urging their horses to greater speed, the masked man and his Indian companion soon reached the hilltop overlooking the village. They saw fire arrows flying through the air, and many of the Mandan houses were in flames. Come on, Tonto. A moment later, as he rode downhill, the lone ranger shouted, The attackers are riding away. Open fire on them. The raiders made no attempt to return the gunfire. Bullets struck one man in the shoulder and another in the arm as the terrorists, with backward glances, spurred their horses and fled. Get right, Wake. Keep us heavy. Let them go. Right in. Close to the As Scout and Silver came to a halt within 50 yards of the nearest burning cabin, the Lone Ranger said, Otto, with a bright moon. I'm sure you'll be able to see the trail of those men. That's right, Kim Savvy. I'd like to know where they go. Ride past the village and follow the trail. But stay far enough back so the men will not know they're being followed. Be savvy. Easy, said big fella. Meanwhile, I'll find out what happened to the Mandans. You leave Silver here? Yes, it's far enough back so he'll not be bothered by smoke and sparks if the wind changes. <laughs> Listen to The Lone Ranger, brought to you by special recording at this same time. The Lone Ranger, a copyrighted feature of The Lone Ranger Incorporated, is produced by Trendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of The Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Foy.